While we were in Europe for three months, everything we owned was in an RV in America, and we had no clue the trouble we'd come home to. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with wanderlust. Welcome to the first episode of Season 9 of the Travel FOMO podcast. This season is called Adapting to RV Life, and that pretty much sums it up. Uh, We're going to tell you about all the places we went and how we got there and all the misadventures along the way as we started out RV life. My name is Jamin Houghton, and I am here with my wife and fellow RVer, Hillary. That's right. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we really did it. We really did it. And after you hear these first few episodes, you're going to be just pretty impressed with our ability to power through. <laughs> <laughs> we we did power through. Like, uh, like overcoming, surviving, and advancing is uh is how we got through this this first season uh we learned a lot about Mm -hmm. rving about ourselves um we were rv newbies and so we're gonna tell you all about it in this season and this in this episode in particular we'll talk about the really really rocky start that we got off to that's right just the transition from europe Mm -hmm. to the u.s was um lots of adventure there and then once we kicked things off truly in america it got uh, even more exciting yeah yeah i feel like at no point during our european adventures in gap year did we ever consider like quitting Mm -hmm. but we definitely did at several points during our American leg. Yeah, we really did. Yeah. It uh, it was just a lot to learn and a lot to adapt to, a lot of like really intimidating things that, that mm-hmm. we had to face together, but uh, we got through them. We'll tell you in this episode um, how we came to the idea of doing an RV, how we chose the RV that we chose, and then uh, sort of the really horrible start to it all. That's right. Yeah. But first, let's talk about like how um, RV life, Airstream life, as I prefer to call it, because we actually kind of went down a more narrow path of owning an Airstream. Um, Let's talk about how that wasn't even really part of the plan in the beginning. Yeah, it really wasn't like we had originally when we came up for our idea of gap year, we were like, well, we'll go to Europe for three months. Then we'll come back and we'll see the U.S. There's a lot of the U.S. that we haven't seen and a lot that we want to see. A lot of cities, a lot of national parks that we've never been to and we want to discover for the first time. And originally our thought was that we will um, see national parks during the week and we'll camp. To, to save money because we're on a, a very limited budget. So yeah, we're like, oh, this will be so cheap. We'll just camp all through gap year. Yeah, we'll do a lot of camping. And then on the weekends, we'll get an Airbnb. And that way, like we'll have kind of that sense of home as well. And we'll be able to do laundry, those sorts of things and see cities on the weekends. And then we'll go back to camping. It'll be really affordable. It'll be great. And we owned an FJ Cruiser. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, this is the perfect vehicle to to do that with. And we got a rooftop tent to put on it. And we're like, this will be a great way. We'll be up off the ground. Our tent will always be with us. We'll be a little more comfortable. And it'll just be like an exciting adventure. And we'll camp, stay really cheap, sometimes for free, Airbnb on the weekends. And and it'll be great. (laughs) just so easy (laughs) yeah what could possibly go wrong right so everything was quickly derailed by our research so that rooftop tent was really kind of something that we'd invested in prior to even considering the idea of a gap year as we started looking more and more into national parks we started realizing that they are not dog friendly guys you're gonna hear a lot about this in the coming weeks um we managed around that um but one of the ways that we managed around that was we ended up in an rv because we were asking ourselves questions like where would maggie stay during the day we've got this rooftop tent we're going into a national park and now we find she can't be hiking with us yeah so that means that she's going to be trapped in a hot vehicle i mean we can't do that all day um you know there's when you're out at national parks which I really didn't know all of this. I 
honest to goodness, guys, I've never even considered going to a national park before we started <laughs> planning all of this. So it wasn't really on my radar, but I didn't realize how far away from civilization that you are just when you enter the park itself. So it's not exactly like you're going to board your dog for the day and then run into the national park. They're so out in the wilderness that um, it's not really an option. So, um, yeah. And and then just alone, the idea of a rooftop tent was tri- was tricky because every time you need to drive to a bathroom or every time you need to drive to the um, head of the trail that you're about to hike or every time you need to just go anywhere, you have to completely pack up your campsite um, I guess you could leave your whole campsite out but you'd have to pack up your tent and your bedding and all the things it's not exactly conducive to needing to use your vehicle during the day right so we were pretty quickly like yeah this isn't gonna work <laughs> <laughs> yeah it uh, it just wasn't gonna be ideal because you even even just to go to dinner you just want to go to dinner you have to pack your tent up go to dinner and then come back and then set your tent up in the dark well, and then what do you do with your dog while you're at dinner? Yeah. So with all that in mind, we decided to go down the road of an RV. And in thinking about an RV, we thought, well, maybe we could do RV full time even after a gap year. And we could work remotely and stay in an RV and continue to, to travel even when we had to go back to work. So we thought, well, we if we're going to do that, we need a little bit bigger of a rig, something that, that we could really live out of. And yeah. so that led us to a place where we realized that we need to stay in more RV campgrounds. And because a lot of national parks, there are size limitations, hookup limitations, things like that. So we knew we would be in a lot more RV campgrounds. We also recognize that RV campgrounds are hard to find in big cities, mm-hmm. especially close to the centers of big cities where you really want to be. So that all kind of led us to say, okay, we need to rethink our route a little bit and some of the cities that we'll go to or not go to Mm -hmm. based on being in an RV. And so we really kind of settled on, okay, RV is, is the way we want to go. And now we're going to kind of rework our route a little bit to be conducive to the RV lifestyle. And that led us really into this RV life and RV world where we started watching YouTube and really doing a lot of research to figure out, okay, what does RV look like for us? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was a lot of keep your daydream that we watched yeah. <laughs> on YouTube. Not going to lie. They have some really practical tips. And I also loved this guy that has the YouTube channel all about RVs. He like gives such practical advice. It was like yeah. really helpful to just hear someone talk about like, here's what you do and you take this filter and you do this and you do that. And it was just all very practical advice where you're like, okay, because it's totally different than owning a home. Yes. It's yeah. similar in some ways, but totally different. The other thing that was such a shock to the system is that like we were coming from Europe where we had like no responsibilities at all. And then we're like stepping into this world of a ton of responsibility and it's new responsibility that we didn't, we weren't familiar with. So very fascinating. Yeah. So we set out to find this RV. Um, We were looking, like James said, we're looking for something big enough that we could work in it afterwards. Um, After gap year ends, we knew we could potentially live and work in it. Um, We also realized our FJ was not going to pull something that big. Nope. So we had to find a truck. So we were looking to buy a truck. We ended up with a Ford F-250 and we paid a pretty penny because at that point, everybody was RVing and everybody wanted a truck. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. They were hard to find. We drove, we lived in Dallas, drove all the way up to Oklahoma Mm -hmm. in order to buy a truck. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah, it was crazy trying to find the right truck and they would sell so fast. That's right. Yeah. Like they would get posted online, you call about it and they'd already be gone. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. And we ended up buying, as far as uh, the actual 
RV, we ended up buying what I like to coin as a vintage. It felt kind of vintage when we walked into it. <laughs> a vintage Airstream Excella. It was a 1997, and we bought it um, the winter before gap year started. So yeah. it was like December 2021. We were going to head out um, to Europe in April and then come back in July and actually live in the Airstream in July. So um, everything inside this Airstream was really well taken care of yeah it was it hadn't it i think it had like one maybe two owners two yeah the yeah yeah, the guy that we bought it from was the second owner right but one person before him um and everything was original it was really well cared for um there was like the cabinetry was all i think it was oak it was um there was there was kind of a weird carpet ceiling (laughs) it was like this dark gray carpet and in the photos you're thinking like no way there's no way this is gonna be okay but then whenever you see it in person you're like oh yeah yeah it's not that big of a deal it's not really carpet it's just like a a soft covering but um then uh i mean it was all original guys there was a floral floral print sleeper sofa in the front (laughs) so like attached to the floor so uh we had a lot of work to do yeah, there was a lot of effort to be made to get it ready to go. Uh, we painted the cabinets. Um, we did white on top and then charcoal for uh, the cabinets below. Um, you did wallpaper. Mm-hmm. We built an L-shaped sofa. So we took the sleeper sofa out completely and built from scratch a sofa, which was really hard. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you, Jamin did such a good job. It was a beast. It, uh, I didn't realize at the time that, you know, I realized that the shape of the Airstream was, you know, circular at the front. And so it was going to be this arc pattern at the front. But I didn't realize that it also changes on the sides. Like they go... They go from narrow to wide to narrow, all in the spans of where you need your sofa to be. And so it was it just took a lot of effort. Um, Yeah, I remember like I always describe it to people as like working inside of a snow globe. You're like literally building something inside a snow globe. And it's different side to side, like the way that it changes is different on one side than the other. So that they can't exactly sides can't exactly mirror each other. They look like they're supposed yeah. to look like they do, but it doesn't quite work that way. And oh my gosh. It, it ended up being quite the effort to make that happen. But um, we ordered some custom vegan leather cushions uh, that ended up making it a really, really comfortable sofa. Yeah. And we would go on to spend a lot of time on it through gap year and even after. Mm-hmm. And it was really nice for that Uh, we put new gold fixtures and hardware everywhere Mm -hmm. so all the cabinets and doors and faucets and all that stuff uh, we replaced and we converted the twin beds that were in the back to a california king size bed which basically made the back room a like bed cave Mm -hmm. pretty much (laughs) um but that it actually ended up being really nice like uh we loved that bed like we bought a a really nice mattress to go in it because we knew we'd be in it full time and, and live in it. And so we wanted it to be really comfortable and ended up being really nice. Um, Hillary did new curtains throughout the whole thing. We bought a bar top from target and, um, installed it and basically like fixed it into place. And that ended up being a really nice space for us to eat or work at. And it all turned out really well. We're really kind of happy with it. Like, Um, by the end it was a ton of work but Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot to it but it it ended up great yeah I mean it was not an easy process though I will say and and you guys the energy in the room here is getting even a little more intense as we talk about this stuff because it was (laughs) so stressful dealing with this stuff but the renovations were not easy we were like living in an apartment right we have limited tools we have limited equipment and you forget how much equipment you need like how many random tools that you need that you just don't own and will never own and don't desire owning but you need it for a minute um man we were like storing the rv in a 
um, storage unit that was 45 minutes away. Um, we were driving in the dark every night after work to go out there um, to where it was. Um, we were, uh, it was crazy cold that winter. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we were working in the cold. We had a little space heater and like a light that we would set up. Um, we were we were painting those white cabinet doors. We were painting them in our apartment. Like we unscrewed them, took them down, started painting them inside the apartment because we knew we could get a lot more done if we just took some back to the apartment with us. Yeah. We took them all back to the apartment with us <laughs> and it was wild. But I felt like that was it actually really was the best thing. The funny part is at one point I'm like painting and we're like watching TV and I'm painting all this this white cabinetry on the floor. And we've got like this crazy furry black dog pouncing around the room and this white paint. And I'm like, how do we keep her out of this paint? It was hilarious. But um, and this was all back in January, February 2022. So there were some really hard freezes around that time of year. Yep. And um, we also went through some winterizing efforts that were not quite as good as they could have been, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and we found out the hard way. So <laughs> we had to uh, end up fixing some leaks before we even got to take this thing out. So we were already, yeah. we had broke it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like having to fix leaks in the bathroom. Um, we ended up going to test it out at a state park in the Glen Rose, Texas area. And um, and we're thinking like, okay, we've got this all fixed. And we start using it and we realize it's not fixed. Oh my gosh. So it's leaking more. Um, so we went back and worked on it some more. And oh yeah. Anyway, it, uh, it was an ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we uh, went to a lot of effort uh, to get it what we thought was ship shape and ready to go. And then it was, I mean, that led up right up to the time where we quit our jobs and headed to Europe. Yeah, we were like wrapping things up just in time. I know, like at one point we were like, we really hope that these sofa cushions come on time because if they don't, we won't know what to do like yeah there there won't be anywhere for them to ship them because we'll be gone mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to it, yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy so we got it all set up and then we quit our jobs yeah took off to europe we Surreal. had a real let's just pause <laughs> and like a moment of silence for like the beauty of that like surreal moment that was crazy <laughs> yeah and uh left the airstream in storage mm -hmm. uh truck in a different storage in a different city and took off to Europe and then getting back from Europe, which if you haven't listened to all of our gap year seasons, like there's a lot of great stuff there that, that we just had an amazing time. So you want to go back and catch that as well. But getting back was a real, real beating. <laughs> <laughs> we, our flights from American airlines, um, were in jeopardy. Like our flight got canceled at that point. They were canceling a lot of flights. And so we were concerned about being able to get back and mm -hmm. what that would look like. Um, we had we had just spent over $300 on a hotel in London that was not a $300 a night hotel yeah. uh, because like Wimbledon was in town and the Pride Parade and another big concert. And so there were no rooms to be found in all of London. Our Airbnb that we had booked six months prior canceled on us last minute and so really threw us into this bidding war to try to find a hotel room and we're like if our flight gets delayed a day like we don't know where we'll stay mm -hmm. yeah that's crazy so flight got canceled they got us on a later flight um and we were flying from london to houston to Dallas and then to Oklahoma City. So we had a lot of, you know, a lot of legs of that flight to try to make. And um, when we got on the plane, they told us, hey, we know that this flight's delayed. A lot of you probably won't make your connecting flights, but there'll be someone from the crew on the plane that will come around and help you figure out Next the rest steps. of your trip. Yeah. We've got it all taken care of. Don't worry about it. Like, we are taking care of it. So we're going to, you know, you just have to wait for the person to sh to walk up to you and talk to you about it, basically. Right. Yeah. 
And then on the plane, they announced that, well, that person won't be on the plane, but as you disembark the plane at the end of, of the gangway, like they'll be right there as you exit the plane, you talk to them there, they'll tell you, they'll set you up with your hotel vouchers and figure out your flights. And so you'll be good to go. They'll be right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well that, you know, now we have to wait a while and still be worried a little bit, but they're going to take care of it. It's fine. Show up at the airport, get down to the end. Hey, where are the people? Actually, they're not here. They're going to be at baggage claim. <laughs> so you go to baggage claim and that's where they'll be. Okay. So go to baggage claim and which was also a little frustrating because we had both carried on. Oh, right. We didn't even need to go to baggage claim. Yeah. So we had no need to go to baggage claim, but Show up to baggage claim, waiting around. There's other people from the flight there. Like, do you know where the people are? No, there's no one anywhere. Nope. And we see people at a kiosk a little ways away. And we're like, oh, well, there's no one here. So that must be them. Walk down there to where they are. They're with a different airline. And we go, well, okay, I guess we have to go back. We turn around and we have crossed the like the, the do line. not return line yeah where now we can't go back yeah which wasn't even really clear no so we definitely would not have done that yeah definitely would not have gone that far if we realized that 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 invisible line was somehow there right right and so now we're really stuck yeah we're in the airport now we're having to figure out okay how are our how are our next flights going to go you had to call american airlines Finally figured out that, okay, our flight out is going to be in the next, like the next morning mm -hmm. at like 6 a.m. And this mm -hmm. is like midnight. Mm -hmm. So. No, it was later than midnight because it was too late for us to think it would be worth it. Well, well, it was like midnight when you got on the phone with American Airlines. Oh, okay. And then by like one o'clock, we realized like, okay, our flight's going to be at like six in the morning. We make our way from one end of the airport to the other, and that takes like 45 minutes. And we realize like, okay, it's almost like two in the morning now. If we leave and go to a hotel and we have a 6 a.m. flight, we would literally go to the hotel, check in, and then like leave and come back. So we're just going to sleep in the airport. <laughs> and yep. that's what we did. And it's as horrible as it sounds. <laughs> there's like there's no really any place to lay down this particular airport like there wasn't even carpet floor it was like tile floor super bright lights announcements people walking around like sweeping and all kinds of stuff so there's no sleep to be had at all and it just it just wrecked us <laughs> so you know we didn't sleep on the plane much no sleep that night. Finally, the next day, we fly out Houston to Dallas, Dallas to Oklahoma City, get in an Uber, and we Uber to our storage unit where our truck was. And we thought, okay, finally. Made it back to the truck. Now we just got to get in the truck, go to my mom's house where Maggie's waiting for us, mm -hmm. and everything will be fine. It wasn't fine. <laughs> we open up our storage unit and we can't get in a truck because the batteries are dead. And so, okay, I thought about this. The batteries might be dead, but then realized that there's no way to unlock the doors when the battery is dead. Our particular truck doesn't have a place for the key to go. Um, I think the door like the door handles had been changed at, at some point by the owner. And so there's no way to get in with a hard key. So we have to call a locksmith and tell him like, Hey, also our, our battery's dead. Maybe you could give us a jump while you're here. Okay, sure. So we wait for a locksmith. It's like 95 degrees. We're waiting on blacktop asphalt in the middle of this storage unit is so hot. 
there's like spiders all inside the storage unit with the RV or with <laughs> yeah. the truck. So it's not like we're going to go sit in the back of the truck in the shade or something. It was yeah. blazing hot. Yeah. Crazy hot. No shade. And guy finally gets there, is able to get us into the truck. Sure enough, battery's dead. Open it up. And we realize that our truck, because it's a diesel, there's two batteries. And so he's not able to jump us so it's not as simple as like oh we'll just get a jump start and go so now we have to call a battery placement person and wait for them to come out which by the way if you ever need to do that just call 1-800 battery (laughs) yeah and they will have someone come out and install it for you and it it actually worked yeah yeah was was it a sunday it was a sunday Yeah. yeah Yeah, so they they came out on a Sunday and got it done right away. Sold us batteries and her million dollars. Yeah, we like, were all good. <laughs> we had to pay a ton. Finally, got the truck started. Finally, were able to drive. At this point, I think we'd been. I remember calculating it up. I think it was like it's either like thirty eight or forty one hours that we'd been awake, and finally made it the hour and a half drive to where my mom was at, at my Papa Bo's house. And we finally got to see Maggie. Mm-hmm. That was wonderful. We had like, <laughs> we recorded, like we, we went out into the backyard and then your mom let her out and she was like, you know, just tromping around. And we like, we're on the other side of the yard and we're like, Maggie. And we were like yelling for her. And you could tell like, she wasn't quite clear what was happening yeah and then she was like holy cow (laughs) and she came running that was fun yeah a lot of energy Mm -hmm. high energy moment (laughs) yep yep it was so sweet oh my gosh it was so sweet and so we got to spend a couple days with them which was Mm -hmm. really nice to have like a nice uh, relaxing place to stay yeah yeah and just to be somewhere that felt a little familiar which Mm -hmm. was actually the first time and three months that we'd been anywhere that felt remotely familiar yeah yeah so that was really nice um and then um and then we headed back to dallas because the dallas was where a lot of stuff was our storage unit Mm -hmm. um and then also our um, airstream was there so had to go pick it up with um and then meet up with the nelsons our friends um we stayed with them a couple nights because we were kicking off the first leg of our adventure with them for the first week or two yeah and i'm so glad that we did because um it gets even more exciting guys we <laughs> headed out we went to amarillo and so we're hauling the airstream for like I don't know, maybe the the third time ever Yeah. on the back of this truck. And, you know, we're kind of crossing our fingers. We're a little scared. Um, <laughs> and we, we make our way out to Amarillo first because that was kind of a good place to stop for the night. And we get there and we plug into the city water. And I kid you not, the leak that we thought we had fixed twice, I think. Yeah. It wasn't. No. It wasn't fixed. We never really hooked it up to pressure. Like, Full on pressure, which is totally different than testing it with the pumps. Yeah. So we found. Yeah, we um, <laughs> we had thought we had fixed it the first time. We found a split in the pipe and we replaced that. And we thought, okay, we're good now. Didn't realize that there were other breaks. Mm-hmm. We replaced some of those and ran water through with the pump, but then. Come to find out it was not nearly enough pressure. And when we pressurized it up, like more leaks just all over the place. Oh my gosh. It was so crazy. And I think like what what did we end up deciding that we actually where it went wrong was when we tried to winterize it, we didn't fully get the water out with like an air pressure or something like that. Yeah, yeah. We hadn't gotten all of the water out. And yeah. so we had drained our tanks. And so like the black and gray tank, obviously, but also the freshwater tank was completely empty and the hot water heater was completely empty but there was still some water in the lines and we hadn't we hadn't blown it out properly yeah. with um with an air compressor yeah. and so when we had a hard freeze it ended up breaking a lot of the, a lot of the lines and so we had leaks so there was that 
that. <laughs> so we're like in Amarillo and it is, again, it's blazing hot. It's July. Yeah. And we don't have water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not only do we not have water, we, well, I guess we kind of do have water because we have water everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but it's just like coming out the back of the airstream to where it connects to the to the city water it was crazy but before we could even deal with that we had another problem on our hands you guys this is like i this it keeps building <laughs> <laughs> yeah we uh we end up in a huge storm that's right so we're out in amarillo out where heat hangs out and also in the plains where big thunderstorms hang out. Not even just big thunderstorms, like tornadoes. This was tornadic. Yeah, it's like crazy. this this huge storm comes through, crazy crazy winds. Um, there were like uh, tornado kind of signs everywhere, and and yeah, we were really worried about it. We'd never been in an RV in like a real storm, mm-hmm. and you can feel the wind all around you including under you and it's really oh. unnerving like when you hear the wind like under you uh-huh and and I you mean, know like having been raised in oklahoma we know that the one place you should never be is inside inside something like that yeah like yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's the exact wrong place to be <laughs> you you got in uh you got in like the bathroom area of the rv <laughs> And I was like, what are you doing? And you were like, you're supposed to get in the bathroom. And I was bathroom. like, we're get in a Coke can. Like, <laughs> if something goes wrong, like, it's just, we're, it's just done. I know. I know. <laughs> it's all I had. It's all I had. I was literally starting to cry. I was like, I literally at one point was like, God, what do you want from us? We, it has, this has gone so bad. Do you just want us to stop? Because <laughs> there are no signs that you want us to keep doing this. <laughs> Yeah. And it like they ended up hailing like and so we're like, oh, man, like, is it are we going to have a bunch of hail damage? Yeah. And that's like the most expensive kind of damage you can get on an airstream. Yeah. Yeah. And we look out like trees are blowing down. I know we saw a couple of other smaller RVs actually kind of getting blown off of the like the chocks that they were on and stuff like it was a legit storm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's a thousand degrees inside the RV, and it's a death, like death of wind and rain outside the RV. It's our first night. We have a water leak where our potable water comes into the trailer, so we're gonna have to get that fixed so we have no water until that is fixed. Um, so, yeah. It's a great day. It's great. <laughs> oh my gosh. This might be the end of RV life for us. <laughs> the beginning and the end. Um, somehow we managed to not get any hail damage. Yeah. Like, And the storm just rolled through and was scary. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. But, oh uh, man, it was definitely a like, what is going on? What are we doing? Yeah, I remember looking down at you like it was so bad at that point. Like I've been crying like it were sweating. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like crazy hot. They, they, I don't even I don't even know. It was just a lot. And I took all the cushions off of the sofa and took them into the bathroom because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't like I don't know. I just was trying to find a safe place. Maggie was scared. Yeah. And um. And then when it's all over with, you just kind of like laid down on the living room floor. Yeah. And just like, and I'd never seen you really like that. And I was (laughs) like, uh, we were finally getting used to documenting our adventures and finally getting used to the idea that like bad things will happen, but we still have to be able to talk about it. Like we can't hide the bad. Yeah. And that was really hard for us for a while. Like in Europe, we we didn't feel like talking when things were going wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And we were really trying to like embrace that a little bit more, be really transparent about that. But this was a hard moment to do that. Pretty sure that's the sound of hail on our new Airstream that we just got out of storage. I am so 
I can't believe it's happening. When you when it comes to especially to like recording and sharing that kind of stuff, I feel like both of us were in the mindset of like we don't mind sharing that. Like I don't I don't mind people knowing the stuff went wrong. I don't not mind people knowing that I made mistakes and things like that. Like it's humbling to a certain extent, but of course. I think we're both like really w- willing to share it. But I think you don't recognize how in those moments, not only do you have to be willing to share it, but you have to like find in yourself the ability to like turn the camera on mm-hmm. and and document it then because then you're like you're like I'm not in the mood to to film yeah I'm not in the mood to document this I just want to get this over Mm -hmm. and I think I think initially I'd always kind of thought like well I'm willing to share that part like I don't mind people knowing that but it's more than just like being willing to is like actually doing it and saying like no I'm gonna make myself yeah like document it yeah and it in a weird way it takes energy and you're so zapped when things are going wrong you don't have the energy to also talk about how bad it's going right yeah (laughs) that's so true so because of all this lovely activity that was happening we had to (laughs) stick around Amarillo the following day which we did not plan on doing we did not want to do yeah it was going to be a a long hard day of driving that we needed to leave early for and didn't work out that way we were trying to get to wyoming and that was going to be really hard to do if we weren't driving (laughs) so (laughs) we scheduled a technician to come out um Mm -hmm. which god bless the the rv technicians that are willing that are mobile yeah and will come to you that is a game changer because not only do you not have to transport your rv to them but also you aren't leaving your rv and waiting for days right they're like fitting you in and so we use them multiple times <laughs> over the <laughs> and course had good experience good experiences with with good, all of them yes with yeah. all of them mm-hmm. great point yeah thanks for saying that um so we reached out to a guy he came out he fixed the main problem but in the process he discovered another leak in the bathroom and then a huge leak exploded in the kitchen and i was just <laughs> like shut off the water i was like screaming it was crazy and um so he's dealing with all of that he couldn't fix it all um, I don't think he was able to fix the kitchen leak. So it's kind of like, you've got some water, but don't use your water. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, it, yeah, it was to a point where it was like, he was, he didn't have the, the parts that he needed. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, we can continue on and someone else can come with the right part and it'll be a fairly easy solution after that. Yeah. So we thought, let's not like give up. You know, we were on our way to the Grand Tetons and Glacier National Park. Like, let's not give up those experiences. RV technicians exist everywhere. We'll continue on and uh, get the rest of this fixed somewhere else. So I sat outside with Maggie in the heat. I will never forget, like, sitting outside with Maggie trying to keep her cool, um, which was crazy because we couldn't have the air conditioner going because I literally could, like, see through to the outside from the bathroom. So, like, running the air conditioner wasn't going to help. But, um yeah, it was like two o'clock before we left Amarillo. That yeah. was kind of crazy, yeah. and uh, and with new problems on our hands that we hadn't known existed, like the cat, <laughs> the kitchen leak was a new one, so that was super exciting. Um, so yeah, we just planned to tackle that along the way, and uh, we drove hard all the way to Wyoming. Yeah, yeah, we left that afternoon, and like, well, well, we just kind of have to make it, yeah. and so we drove drove all the way to Wyoming we did stop and we had dinner like a Cracker Barrel Mm -hmm. that's a Houghton family tradition (laughs) we try to throw that in that you're going to hear a lot more about Cracker Barrels this season or the coming season yeah we got really close to Cracker Barrel this was just (laughs) the, the beginning of it um and then we finally made it to the next place where we were going to stay overnight um I think it was around midnight yeah and we had called ahead and, and they were like, yeah, you don't like, you can just come in. Here's your site number and just hook up. And 
And it, luckily it was a place where we were just staying for the night. So we were like, we just need to get close enough to the electric hookup that we can get this thing plugged in and we're not even going to unhook the truck. Like we're just yeah. going to get in and go to sleep. Yeah. That was a, a good idea. It was gl- I was glad to have at least arrived. Yeah. And because our friends were there too. So it was like, oh, we've caught up with them. We're yeah. at least going to get to travel with them. So that was like relief. Yeah. Yeah. And it, the, another crazy thing about RVs that you don't think about beforehand is that it takes a while for them to cool down, especially when it's been really hot. Mm, especially in an airstream. Yeah. And so we, you don't just like stop at night, plug in, turn the AC on and like five minutes later you're good. So it's like, it was kind of a warm, warm night for yeah. the, the AC trying to catch up. Like, and you know, once you're in a place for a while and it has some time to, to do its work, the air conditioner will do well, but that night it was uh, did not have the time that it needed to really cool things off. But man, yeah, it was crazy. But I remember that morning though. The next morning it was beautiful, and it was. I didn't realize how much of Wyoming was just wide open plains. Yeah, and that's kind of where we were. I think we were near Cheyenne, Wyoming, ish. That sounds right. I think. Yeah. Um, and I took Maggie outside to go to the bathroom, and it was just a perfect sunrise and the weather was nice and cool by then. And, um, I was feeling like a little bit more optimistic, um, with everything. Cause we, I guess, cause we'd actually made it (laughs) or we made it there at least. Um, still a little scared, but mostly optimistic and, um, kind of wondering when the next ball was going to drop. But you know, the rest of the drive was uneventful. And before you know it, we were in the grand Tetons. Yeah. Yeah. And that was truly amazing. Yeah. And um, so much to say about that, but you're going to have to wait for the next episode. Yeah. So we got a lot of the drama out (laughs) and uh, are are ready to tell you about the Grand Tetons. We'll continue talking about RVing and stuff that we learned along the way, but uh, it's just excited to share about our national park experiences. We had been to a national park before, but never with uh, an RV, never done it. RVing and certainly never been to the Grand Tetons and it was amazing like yeah. driving into the Tetons is like is like nothing else just so cool so great oh my goodness yes and if you guys are not already subscribed and you know you can subscribe on YouTube you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening but also you can check us out on social media we are on Instagram Facebook TikTok all the things um and one of the things that's a little bit advantageous about following us there is that you get to see some of our real life updates. And one of the real life updates is that we just came back from Grand Cayman and enjoyed a week there. So fun. Um, So if you want to kind of see what's happening in our lives real time, you can do that on social media. And we are at Travel FOMO Podcast is how you can find us. Um, We love, you know, we're we're working now. We're just regular people working now. And um, but one of the things we still try to do is we love traveling and we love making sure you guys get to see that and Grand Cayman is one of those things that we have on the docket um we also have another a trip to Jamaica coming up um in a few months so we're going to make sure and uh keep some fun stuff out there for you guys to see so that is something you can do out there on social media and there are other ways you can reach out to us as well Yes, uh, we have an email, travelfomopodcast at gmail.com. And if you would like to share really anything with us, let us know if you like the show, um, constructive criticisms or anything like yeah. that. We're, we're ready to hear them. But one of the things that we would love to hear is your stories. So if you are willing to share your story with us and with the Travel FOMO family, Uh, Just type it up in an email and send it to us. We'll read it here and share your tips and tricks, your stories, maybe that crazy thing that happened to you uh, the first time that you went RVing, anything like that. We want to hear about it. We want to share it. Also, if you would like to record it yourself, you can just pull out your phone, record a voice memo and email that to us. And we'll just plug it in right here on the podcast so you can share it in your own words. Uh, We would be really excited 
to hear from you and hear about the adventures that you're going on and to share those with everybody else. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It would really make me feel better if somebody sent us in a story about the mistakes that they made RVing. <laughs> I would just feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You definitely feel uh, like you're the only one in the world that is this dumb when you make RV mistakes. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. Oh, there's more to come, guys. But it's, it's good and bad stuff. So we can't wait to share it all with you. We'll be honest and transparent about it so that you can really know what you're getting. Um, right. If you decide to, to go the RV route. Um, so, and we're sharing all of that as real as we can because life is short, guys. Wonder well. 